So as a fresher coming here, it'll be intense. There'll be a lot of alcohol involved probably. You'll be very hungover. It'll be awkward because you have to meet a lot of people in a very short space of time. But there will come that point probably about three days in where you'll realise I've actually got to do my first essay now and you have to sober up very quickly and having somewhere like the library to head to you'll be grateful. Go into the college library, swipe your card and head through the doors and most people will have their favourite study space. My favourite place to study is right by the shelves for my subject. Going to the library, it adds a, a friendly competitive element. So you've got people around you who are probably doing different subjects, but they're all studying at a high level. If there's that moment where your mind's wandering, you sort of, all it takes is a glance to see someone else working and it sort of gets you back in the zone. I feel that my towers of books, they're comforting and they give me a safe haven. That's my space for study, that's my work. outside anybody if you want to break. The college librarian here, Chris, she's a very friendly face, a motherly figure to all the sleep-starved, um, caffeine-addled students that pass through her doors. She really does put a great effort on of making sure that the libraries run smoothly, but also that it's a pleasant place to be. So she puts a thousand-piece puzzle down in the basement. It's going to have a little bit of white on it. The jigsaw's a great thing. If I've been working, I want to have a break, but I don't want to do something that's going to take me off the burner. So doing a puzzle, it's mentally stimulating, but it's not work-related. Five or six hours out of the day I might be in here. Some people do never leave. Apparently in Keys they have showers in the library. That's a rumour I've heard. Everyone's got a different rumour about what every library has. Yeah. Like, oh, I've heard they, they spoon-feed you while you study and they change your clothes. All libraries should be run like Las Vegas casinos, <laughs> just round the clock. Table service. Yeah, table service. If you need to leave your seat, they That's get the bodyguard in. This library's great, but it's a jack of all trades, so it serves every subject. If you go down to your faculty, it's just for yours. You're much more likely to find what you need there. On my course, there are eight people. It's often the case that we're all doing the same book in the same week. They don't have eight copies here, so getting down to the faculty where they have a few more is always very handy. The English Faculty Library was very well designed to kind of keep you on task and keep you focused. There's a lot of natural light in there, so even on the kind of coldest, bleakest Cambridge days, there's still uh, enough natural light to make you feel alive while you're studying and keep you awake, which is good. The library smells like hard work and procrastination. It also smells like a great deal of ambition. The work is never ending at Cambridge and that's not a bad thing. It's, you know, it's what we all signed up for. What's nice about going to the library is it makes you feel like you're focusing on one task and getting it done. The library is really good for resources. Firstly, it has a pretty comprehensive collection of all of the original works that you're going to want to read. But it also has a really fairly robust collection of secondary critical works. So if you're given a reading list, the chances are you'll be able to find it. If you can't and you really want it, you can also get them to order it in. The Newton catalogue works so seamlessly. It's really easy to find the stuff and once you've got the hang of where it is on the floor, you can almost inevitably find whatever it is that you're looking for. It's got a long borrowing period, so you can borrow books without worry that they're going to sort of run out midway through. And even if they did, you could renew them online. It's also useful to remember that a lot of the library's resources are available online. So even if you're not actually at the library, you can get hold of stuff that you need. Oxford English Dictionary, that's always a useful one. But there's a lot of other stuff as well, like actual texts you can get hold of online um, from reputable literary sources, to, in, and they have all sorts depending on which paper you're studying. You can also get facsimiles, which are really useful.
I normally work on my own in my room, but if I want to go to the library, I often go with Alex because I think she has the same problem of going stir crazy if we're left in our room for a long time. So um, we both go to the libraries together. So she helps keep me focused, and it's also nice to have someone to go to lunch with. We're library comrades. <laughs> That's not funny. That's true. It is. You know, because the library, you know, you need you need your, your you need your buddies with you. You need your compatriots. I don't know. This is yeah. quite nice about not being on your own. I first thought it was intimidating. Everybody there knew so much more than me. Everybody was older. Everybody knew how to use the library, and I was looking along the shelves, going, "I don't know what I'm doing," you know, and stuff. And then one day, I think I just kind of got used to it, and I remembered. I was like, "Oh, this must happen to every person every year." And then it was just fine. Also, you can always just go across the road to the university library where they have every book ever. If it's not there, it's not anywhere. I quite like it. I go there every Saturday. I know that's a very sad thing to say. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's lovely to have a whole of your friends in and around the library, but it can be very distracting. Sometimes you're not getting on with work as much as you might like to be. So when you need to go somewhere else, get away from people, uh, I think my favourite place to go is the university library. It, it is massive. And if you want to, you can be away from anybody. Yeah. It turns out that your standard library card means you're a member of the university library. You just have to, as a student, you just have to turn up with your card and go in. Not everything is on the shelves, and if you need something, you look it up on the computer system, you request it, and then shortly, some through some magical process, the book will appear, and it has, I think, a copy of every book ever published. So they just have an enormous wealth of stuff. And if I want to find out a review of a product that I want to buy on eBay from four years ago, I can go and get a computer magazine out. <laughs> a bizarre place you can get magazines and for me as an engineer, the exciting thing, if I want to check up on my lecturers, just to be sure that they're not lying to me, I could go and look at a first edition of Newton's works and see what he wrote down. It also has a a set of really nice and varied working environments. So somewhere in the library for your particular mood there is a perfect desk and the trick is finding it. I find myself regularly gravitating towards one particular desk. It has a light above it and it isn't close to a clock. My perfect desk is out of the way really so I can, I can properly focus. Probably the best thing is that you can see King's College Chapel. When you leave, it's sort of it's, it's a very satisfying feeling because the library makes you more efficient and you come out just going, yeah, you think, I've done that, it was hard, but it's finished. And you, you can go back to see people in a more relaxed environment and have a bit of fun. <laughs>